Good morning. How is everybody? Good? Awesome. What if I told you that it is possible to inhabit your very own planet? What would it orbit? In which galaxy would it reside? What would be its most fascinating features? Einstein said that imagination is everything. It is the preview of coming attractions. So with that in mind, what's the name of your planet? Hmm. I invite you to come with me on an out of this world adventure to discover how to inhabit your very own planet, Planet U. But humor me, hop into my way back machine, go back to the year 1997 when I looked around and saw that Bill Nye the Science Guy and Beekman's World were the only television shows about science. But a female host of a science show I could not find. And that is when I decided to inhabit my very own planet, Janet's planet. I knew that I would travel at the speed of thought and that my planetary mission would revolve around sharing my love of space and the wonders of our wild and wacky solar system with students across the globe. Where is Janet's planet? In a galaxy far, far away. And our very first animation had me sort of popping out of the center of the planet, extending my arms and welcoming everybody in. I know, it looks a bit weird and uh, becoming a planet takes time, right? But even with my very interesting planetary beginnings, I still knew that I had arrived at the star around which I should orbit with my very own planet, Janet's planet. So cue, better opening animation, and a song even. And my planet continues to evolve. So imagine, master of your own planet that you are, getting into your spacesuit, buckling yourself into the captain's seat of your very own soul, lifting off and launching your life toward the planet that you will inhabit, planet you. But first, let's begin by establishing what a planet needs to be habitable. Now, a planet should rotate on its axis and orbit around its star. For a planet to sustain life, it has to be a comfortable distance from its star, much like the Earth's distance from the star at the center of our solar system, the sun. Around a star, there is a shell-shaped region of space called the habitable zone, or HZ. It's also known as the Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot and it's not too cold. The HZ is where a planet can maintain liquid water on its surface. A planet should have a mass large enough to establish planetary permanence and a stable configuration around its star. But here's a galactic idea for you. What if, what if instead of asking, hey, what do you do for a living? We started asking, hey, what's your HZ? What's your habitable zone? But to even ask that question, you would need to identify where your planet is situated in the habitable zone of your star, right? You see, for complex life forms like ourselves, we derive our energy from the sun. So make sure your planet revolves around those things that bring you life and sustenance and joy. Frederick Beekner says that we will always be called to the place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. And when you find your deep gladness, I can most assuredly tell you that the world's deep hunger will find its way to you and you to the fulfillment and true habitation of planet you. You see, I found my deep gladness. It is communicating science, mentoring students from around the world, and encouraging young people to stand in their inherent magnificence. I planted my flag on Janet's planet and said, I will be a woman that touts the merits of space and science and art as the most noble of endeavors. This, this is where I make my stand. And don't be alarmed if your um, orbit is a tad bit eccentric. That is OK. In fact, I applaud that. Whatever your tilt, rotation, or revolution, inhabit your massive awesomeness. Establish your planetary permanence and orbit well, my friends. Secondly, if you're going to inhabit your very own planet, prepare for the unexpected. Spacefaring and making a planet habitable will present many challenges and problem-solving situations that you will need to address head on and in the absolute present. You must keep your head while all about you is losing theirs, says Kipling. But your life, your planet, your crew, and the success of your mission will depend on this. I had the privilege of hearing Captain Sullenberger speak about landing U.S. Airways Flight 1549 in New York's frigid Hudson River. 
The two engines lost thrust because of a bird strike. He had 208 seconds to get that plane safely down after those engines lost power. Someone in the audience asked him that day, well, had you ever done a water landing before? And he said no. He had only ever gone over it inside a classroom as a purely hypothetical maneuver. And then somebody else asked him, well, how did you trust yourself to do it that day? And he said he had spent year after year making deposits into his knowledge and experience bank account. And the day that he needed to make a large withdrawal, that experience and knowledge helped him to save every single passenger, every member of his crew, without harm to any civilians. So as you begin to inhabit your very own planet, planet you, deposit your knowledge, your experience, and the wisdom gained from your failures, and yes, sometimes you will fail. But the lessons learned when things go supernova, well, that's valuable currency as well. Put them all into your repository of expertise, and when the day comes and you need to make a large withdrawal, you will have a surplus of competence at your command. Thirdly, protect yourself from cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation is primarily composed of highly charged uh, subatomic particles that have very damaging effects on whatever they encounter. They come in at a very high energy and a very high velocity, and they don't just bounce off like ping pong balls. They go directly through, penetrating the most robust of protective shielding. Toxic people, circumstances, and environments can be a lot like cosmic radiation, breaking down molecular bonds, destroying the very fabric of your planet's DNA and ecosystem. So it is vital for planet U to have a strong molten core working in what we know as dynamo action to generate a magnetic field. And get this, turbulence in your core actually magnifies that magnetic field. So when you are rocked to your core and life is tough, turbulent and tumultuous, your planet's health and well-being will be relying on your ability to keep on manufacturing good, tenacious energy from the very center of you. And you'll want to learn how to recognize an incoming gamma ray burst of distraction, procrastination, and the dust storms of self-defeating excuses. Become a space ninja and strike a blow to the negatively charged effects of people, places, and things that would dare send a glaring beam of adversity upon you. Create your own force field. Adopt the properties of Earth's atmosphere that serve as a protective buffer around our home planet. And when you do, any negative, naysaying, or nullifying opponent will be forced to lose their energy. And next, seek out stable stars and choose your crew wisely. The stars around a habitable planet have to be stable. And I have been lucky enough to have many stable stars and mentors in the neighborhood of Janet's planet. And without them, life on my planet would not be as good nor as bright. So find your stable stars for planet U and let them be the guiding lights of how you orbit. And on any given crewed mission, there are two to four people who are with you for the duration. And choosing not only to be the best crew member you can be, but choosing who accompanies you on your mission will be critical to your planet's success. And I am telling you right now that that crew member is liable to affect your inner and outer environment. And so be very careful how you choose your crew. Many of you may already have an amazing array of folks who have firmly and steadfastly loved you into being and mentored you to where you are today. For others of you, Perhaps it's been assembling your own family and crew of choice. Again, moving forward, choose your crew wisely. For whomever you surround yourself with and who you allow to traverse your planet will definitely affect who you are. And then, besides the physical necessities that you might need for inhabiting, inhabiting planet you and making your planet habitable, here are some physical traits you might find helpful. Be resilient. Make sure your thought processes are persistent, that you persevere and that you remain productive, that you are at your best when things are at their worst and or turbulent in your core. Have an indomitable spirit. Be a resilient planet. And we will also want to acquire adaptability. And what I mean by that is that you graciously adapt 
to situations, climates, and individuals that you know your boundaries and how and when to extend them. And your planet will also want to be open and tolerant to ideas and approaches different from your own, realizing that the diversity of everything is critical. Be an adaptive, ever-evolving planet. Next, stay curious. Never, ever lose a holy curiosity. Ask questions to understand, not simply just to get answers. Wake up every morning looking for something that you didn't know before and search out experiences that bring wow and awe to your planet. And here's the other thing. I want you to be curious, open-minded, and even an open-armed planet. And next, be trustworthy and therefore kind. You must be able to trust in yourself and maintain trust in others. Your trust must be built upon good judgment and an ample dose of intuition and discernment. Trust thy planet and mind your manners. Kindness and compassion, like gravity, have a way of tethering us all together. So always, always let love be the guiding law of how you inhabit your planet. And finally, let creativity reign. Flex those creative muscles and how you approach a problem that arises on planet you. Think out of the box, over the top thoughts so that you are never constrained by how it's been done before. Have a good sense of play and a spirit of playfulness. Inhabiting your very own planet will afford you many an opportunity to celebrate the idiosyncrasies of spooky action at a distance. Maybe it's not that spooky and to laugh at life's absurdities. Lastly, know this. This cosmos is in desperate need of your planet's genius. Carl Sagan said that we are star stuff. From the iron in our blood to the calcium in our teeth to the carbon in our DNA, we are literally made from the very same elements that exist in the hearts of stars. And the chances of you being you with your own unduplicable biological signature is something like one in 10 to the 2,685,000th power. So the chances of you being you is actually zero. And yet you are here. You are here. So go forth and command your mission like the cosmic miracle you are. And let your mind revolve around this thought. What will you do with your one wild and precious planet? If you don't succeed in inhabiting your very own planet and completing the mission of planet U, it will go undone. Will it be easy? Nope. Will it be hard? <laughs> You betcha, sometimes super hard. But will inhabiting your very own planet, planet you be worth it? You bet your orbit it will. And that's the view from Janet's planet. Thank you so much. <laughs>